Hey guys, I want to share two scriptures with you all with you all today, and then I'm going to give you some encouragement. So I'm going to start in Matthew chapter 12, and I'm going to start at 46. And they're talking about Jesus. While he was still talking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and brother stood outside seeking to speak with him. Then one said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak with you. But he answered and said to the one who told him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brethren. Now this is key, guys. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. And that was Matthew chapter 12, 46 through 50. Now, the next script I'm going to read you is in Matthew chapter 8. And in Matthew chapter 8, I'm going to start at 19. Then his mother and brothers came to him and could not approach him because of the crowd. And it was told him by someone who said, your mother and your brothers are standing outside desiring to see you. But he answered and said to them, my mother and my brothers are are these who hear the word of God and do it. Again, my mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and do it. Now, someone may say, oh, Jesus sounded like he was being rude and funny to his own mother and his family. They often go also, they often refer back also to the scripture in, I want to say it's John chapter two, where he went to the wedding right? And his and his mother said they were out of wine. And he says, woman, what have I to do with you? So in our normal English language and other languages, probably referring to a woman is rude and disrespectful. You know, you call that person by their name or you say ma'am. But I want you to know that woman in this context was actually a term of high respect, high regard. Okay. So, um, Jesus was not being disrespectful at all. And if we look at the love and the compassion that he had for everyone, there's no way he's turned around and being disrespectful to his brother, but brothers or his mother. But what I always found is that Jesus was always in a state, a teaching mode. He was always teaching and showing them, you know, showing those who are listening, his disciples, he was always teaching them something. So he was not disregarding his mother because even when he was on the cross, he was ensuring that she was taken care of. Okay. Um, I believe that if Jesus cared enough to, um, I want to say it was Peter when he went to his house, I want to say it was Peter, his mother had a fever. They, he cared enough to, to heal her from a fever. So he's a kind and wonderful Lord. So he was not being disrespectful. So this video, guys, is to encourage you because there's it, it is in my spirit that there are a lot of God's children who are feeling very lonely. You're feeling very lonely. You're feeling that you're by yourself because your family, your friends, loved ones, they may not be with you. They may have rejected you. You don't have close relationships with them. And so you're looking at the world and you're looking at people who have great relationships with their mother and their father and their siblings. And for the holidays, they're talking about what they're going to do. And maybe they talk about what they did over the weekend. You may hear them having a conversation with, you know, their siblings and they have that type of relationship. And then you're going, what's wrong with me, Lord? Why don't I have this? Why have I lost everybody? Why am I not in good standing with my mother and my father and my brothers and my sister. And then we're also in a world where, you know, if someone is looking for you, looking for you as far as like, let's say a friendship or even want to consider you for marriage, right? Or being with you. Oftentimes people are looking at your family background and your family history and some cultures, that's how it is. If you seem that your family is raggedy and y'all don't have any closeness and there seems to be, um, this, you know, dysfunction in the family, then they tend to want to label you to say, well, you don't have a stable background and you may feel that way. You may have come from what they call a dysfunctional family, but, and so you're very, you're having doubts about yourself and then you feel lonely. I don't have anybody, but the Lord wants me to encourage you that you have plenty of brothers and sisters in Christ, right? 
And we're not talking about the ones that jump around in church with their eyes fully dilated, singing Jesus, but with a full of hate in their heart. I'm talking about those who are truly seeking God and they truly love the Lord. They love him and they're doing his work. And oftentimes they too feel separated at times. Okay. You have plenty of family on all the four corners of this world. We're called the elect of God and we will all meet and we will all see each other. And we have mediums by which we can meet and encourage one another. You know, technology perhaps was created for different reasons, but the Lord uses it for his good as well. You see your brothers, you see your sisters online doing the work of God. You can reach out other people who reach out and encourage you. You may get that, guys, and you need to be satisfied with those moments. It may not be what you may want it to be, but you know, guys, we have to be focused on the work. If we're putting our hands to the plow and doing the things of God, or we are getting in the presence of the Lord and getting ourselves aligned with him, then you're going to be filled with his peace. And it's not that you don't we don't have human feelings and we don't feel sadness or maybe loneliness, but that stuff cannot stay because when you're filled with the when God's presence is in your life, that stuff don't last cuz you're you're at peace. I want you to know that you're not by yourself. I want you to know that you are not alone. You have brothers and sisters in the Lord. Who are your brothers and sisters? Those who does the will of the Father. Those who hear it. I like how it's, it, you know, it was put in Matthew. In uh, was it Matthew? Matthew chapter. I lost it. <laughs> I lost it, guys. I'll find it. But anyway, it said, said there, he who does the will, who hears, not only hears, but does the will of my father. This is the person who are my mother and my father, my mother and my brothers. Okay. So here it is. Whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my mother and brother. That was Matthew chapter 12. But the one I want to read to you is Luke 8. And in Luke 8, it tells us, 8 and 21, he says, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. Those who hear the word of God and do it, guys. That's who your mother, that's who your brother that's who your sisters are. And the, the, the Lord is not telling us that we should disregard our family and not love them. But what do you do when they reject you? What do you do when they don't want to have anything to do with you? What do you do when they think you're this crazy Christian that's lost your top? So it's the enemy will come in to make you feel like, look at you, you're all alone, you don't have a boyfriend, you don't have a girlfriend, you don't have a husband, you don't have a wife, your husband's gone, your wife's gone, or your husband don't like you, your wife don't like you that much, all oh, your kids are neglecting you, oh, look at them, they're all, all your siblings and all your family have gathered together over to, at another family member's house and they didn't invite you over, you're the oddball. Why does he do that? so that you will conform. If you conform and you act like them and you allow them to insult you and talk any old kind of way to you or you do what they're doing to other people, you gnash on others, you compromise, you start drinking and smoking and cussing again and watching watching what they want, what they want to watch and doing what they want you to do, then you're gonna fit right in. But you always have to remember there is no family special. There's no family value pack when it comes to eternity. When we stand before the Lord, the Lord is only going to take those in the family who served him. And the rest who does not are not going into heaven. Just like if all your family was serving the Lord and you were not, the Lord is not going to say, oh, well, come on in. You the baby of the family. Nope. We're souls when it really get down to it. 
So sometimes, guys, if you're wondering how is it that it seems like you are, it seems like you're almost not related to your folks, you know, because of the stuff that they do or the level of evil they can do towards you or the level of disregard that they seem to have towards you. Because spiritually, they're not your family. Okay? Who is your family? Those who does the will of the Father. So when I... So I look at my brothers and sisters in the Lord, you know, and of course, I don't have a bad relationship. You know, I have my brothers and my family and everything, but every guys, whatever is not perfect and whoever, whatever relationship you may have, that's just not panning out the way that you thought it would. If you are not having a good relationship, you know, people have problems. Every family has problems, Right. But there's a difference between, you know, just natural family isms and schisms. And then there's a whole level of just a malignant, toxic behavior, disrespect, maltreatment, where they will hurt you. They will hit below the belt. They will talk about your husband, your wife, your kids, your daddy, your, you know, you, your dog, your ailment. They throw up your your past it that's different and so that's because they are being used by a principality and a power in other words a demonic spirit i know it may be hard to say a family member is being used by a demonic spirit but it's the truth and especially if they're living in bitterness they are angry people they are malicious that is a spirit and it enters in through disregard for the principles of God, doing what they want to do, obeying God when they feel like it, obeying God only in certain instances, overriding God, or not knowing God at all. So they'll act up. And so you have to make a choice. But you have to realize no matter what you go through with your family, the enemy's whole pro the whole the enemy's whole purpose is hoping that you will just let go, give up. And just do what they want you to do. Act like them. Make you feel like you are all alone. Make you begin to resent God and say, God, what kind of God are you that you're taking everybody away from me? And it seems like everybody hates me. And I'm in these flaky relationships. And then now you try to really get close to other believers. And some of them turn out to be flaky too. Well, that's because those individuals, those believers that are wishy-washy, they're not his. They're not his. Okay? Now, everybody makes mistakes, but you find believers, they make mistakes and they will not acknowledge it. They're not his. So that's why the word of God, I like what it says here in Luke chapter 8 that says in 21, it says, my, my mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and does it. Those who hears the word of the Lord and does it are your brothers are your sisters we're spread all across the globe we're spread all across the globe and there are many that feels the same way they feel like they're on their own but guys you're not alone remember when the disciples scattered from jesus in the garden of gethsemane gethsemane except for the last 12 he said to them you guys will leave me alone this is before they they scattered the bigger group scattered he said you guys will leave me alone but I am not alone because my father is with me. We must get back to being fully content with Jesus alone. Just knowing God is with us. That should give us joy, guys. And if it's not, you must examine that and have the Lord work through your heart in this manner on that area. Because if you are not, if you don't have joy in him, then you're going to be needy. You're going to find yourself being angry and really wanting and desiring and thinking something is wrong with you. You have a large family. You have plenty of brothers. You have plenty of sisters. We have plenty of brothers, plenty of sisters, plenty of mothers. They're out there, guys. Okay? You just need to know that. Do not be discouraged. Do not feel like you're all by yourself. But most importantly, we have God. And if you if you aim to obey him and to do his perfect will, just to spend time with him, you do his will, you hear his commands, and you do them. 
we you will be the one that he's going to manifest himself to and come and make his abode with you and when the lord comes and makes his abode with you it just fills you it fills every void every ounce of you that guys you are just joyful you're joyful if you have a lot or you have a little if you have people smiling with you or if they don't you're just joyful why because your joy comes from the Lord. All right? So don't feel lonely and don't feel like you're by yourself. You are not. You are not. All right, guys. Bye.